Well, we've begun doing an orientation uh, for the new fellows, um, either here at our offices or off-site if we tie it to a workshop. It's just too hard to do it at the symposium. And understand what our expectations are for them and how we expect them to join this group of fellows, become part of the community, and benefit from the experience beyond the university. You know, we are, we are, we are not in the education business. We are very careful not to intrude into their on-campus experience, but we do a lot of things for them off-campus and we want them to understand the value we attach to that. So they, some of them got to do fun things. I mean, this year at the West Coast retreat, the West Coast crew got to go through the Tesla assembly plant over in Fremont and watch a very elegant car being made and understand some of the design concepts for it. So they had a good time. I had a board meeting in March when we picked the 15 fellows we picked this year. That's always the highlight of the year. The selection process comes to a close then and our selection committee recommends a slate of people to the board and then the next day the board decides do we want to accept that slate, would we move the cut line, would we give additional or fewer fellowships depending upon both the quality of the students and the, um, uh, the comfort we feel with our budget, I guess. We've sort of the last few years held at 15. Now, I've pushed for 16 a couple times and my prudent board votes me down so we've learned to negotiate with each other on this. And, and then the, the board meeting in the fall was in New York, where we had um, a very interesting luncheon with venture capital people who were exposed to the process by which we give the Newman Prize for entrepreneurship to fellows that are starting new companies. Uh, had an evening with a group of philanthropists, which was quite interesting, and then had the board meeting and had a dinner for fellows in the New York area, which was really quite exciting. We added four new board members this year. Uh, Daniel Goodman, whom I had mentioned before, Lily Kim from the Vice Institute, um, Tom Tombrello, an emeritus professor at Caltech, and um, Paul Young, who's a senior managing partner at Goldman Sachs. All but Tom are Hertz fellows themselves, which is sort of the ratio we, we search for. We expect this board to pretty much be dominated by Hertz fellows in the future, because the future of the foundation is in their hands. And, and I think that's a, a comment that comes in this year. One can see the community growing and the responsibility the fellows feel towards the future of the fellowship program, and that's, that's good to see. This was the 50th anniversary year of the Hertz Fellowship, so we had a symposium to honor that on the campus of the University of Maryland in August, and it was really exciting to get Hertz Fellows from the very earliest days together with the ones currently in school, uh, to watch them work problems together, to let them talk to each other about their research, uh, to let them have some wonderful music and personal experiences because they're quite remarkably well-rounded people as well. So uh, it, was a, it was a show you probably couldn't buy a ticket to anywhere in the world, I guess would be my characterization of it. And certainly the, the memory I carry away that I think is the most fun is watching uh, Nobel laureate John Mather and Lieutenant General Ellen Polakowski make paper airplanes together and fly them in a competition with, with kids that are in school. So you know, you're not going to see that everywhere. And then Dan Goodman, who's the wonderful Hertz fellow, who, um, who's a concert pianist as well as being a Hertz fellow, who uh, can meld two musical styles together, did as he said he thought he would never be the warm-up act for a Nobel laureate for John Mather's talk. So it was really quite a lot of fun. The, the speakers at the symposium were very special. My good friend Norm Augustine was the keynote speaker because Norm has, since his retirement from Lockheed Martin, pretty much devoted himself full-time to the improvement of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education in the United States. He led the National Academy study called Rising Above the Gathering Storm, and then the sequel to that. Um, I mentioned Lieutenant General Ellen Polakowski. She owns the satellite constellation the United States runs, and she described the issues of uh, maintaining that constellation, the interesting opportunities and threats it's faced. Alice Gast, who's the president of Lehigh University, talked about what science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education looks like from the perspective of a university president these days. John Mather, Nobel laureate, who's the project scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope, talked about what looking at the universe will be like when the telescope is up in another few years, so that was exciting. And then not a Hertz fellow, Kenneth Miller, who is a professor of biology at Brown, came and talked about his activity. So very broad spectrum of people, quite exciting.